Hey everyone, welcome back to the Pilot's Wife podcast. This is Amy McLaren and this week I'm going to do something a little different. We're going to have a little bit of a quiz night tonight. Well, it's night time for me when I'm recording this. When I was about to get married to Josh, my friends organised this hen's night for me and it all started at this one place where we went to have a drink and they did this quiz to me and they tested my knowledge on how well I knew Josh and the score that I got was directly tied to how much punishment I got on the hen's night (laughs) so I think I got maybe I got three or four things wrong whatever it was out of the list of ten or something and so each one that I got wrong I had to go and do a particular task to kind of make up for and The last task of all was not even related to any of the questions. It was just they thought it would be funny to make me jump off the Sky Tower in Auckland, which is, I think it's 326 metres high. The platform's not quite that high, but there's this sky jump that you do where you're kind of mostly free-falling, but at the last minute you're you're, you're tied to this rope and it slows you down and at the end it kind of pulls you up so you don't (laughs) crash on the ground. And so they made me do that. Mainly they made me do that because I was about to marry a pilot or someone who was trained to be a pilot and they thought I needed to get over my fear of heights. I don't think it worked though. And today I was tidying up some books and stuff. We've lost a library book and I was looking through everything and I came across this book that I've got where it's got all these kind of these questions that you ask about your partner or you or you write to your partner and you kind of give it to them as a keepsake which I I never filled out but I thought it would be fun to do this as a quiz together so I will ask you the questions and as I'm asking them you can try and answer them for yourself or if you're with your partner listening to this uh, you can answer together and I will try and answer them as well at the same time and then because Josh hasn't been listening to my podcast episodes for a while he ran this 100k ultra marathon in Taupo a few weeks back and since then he's only listened to podcasts very, not very much like he hasn't been doing as, lo- as long training lately and so shorter runs and I guess he's been listening to catching up on all his other podcasts so I thought well if I do this quiz tonight and then I ask him to listen to it hopefully he'll listen to it during the week because he's going to get into this running again and then he can tell me all the ones that I got wrong or that he was surprised about. So that's the plan for this evening. It's quiz night. So here's the question. For those of us who don't have a picture-perfect relationship, who don't put our highlights reel on social media and pretend it's all rosy, where can I get some down-to-earth inspiration without any religious barriers? Who can give me real-life encouragement, help me be a better spouse, and tell me how to get an even more enriching relationship without becoming a doormat? That is the question, and this podcast will give you the answers. I'm Amy McLaren, and this is the Pilot's Wife Podcast. Welcome, welcome to the Pilot's Wife Quiz Night. I don't actually know what you do, what you say at the start of a quiz, because it's been a long time since I've been to a quiz night. But I think, yeah, the rules are that the people that guess the most answers win. So... Uh, Let's just crack into it. So in this little memoir book that I've got, there's a section on things that you can write kind of like to the other person. And then there's a section on questions you quiz yourself on and then check the answers and see how many you got right. So the first part was some some nice things or some, some things that they might not know that you can tell them. So that's kind of like quizzing me on me. And then... And then the second part is quizzing me on him, on Josh. (laughs) So if that makes sense. The first one is, when I wake up next to you. And so then you're supposed to write the rest of the sentence. When I wake up next to you. If I was writing that out to Josh, I'd probably write something like, I'm so grateful that I'm not going to be starting the day alone. And it has more meaning it has more meaning now uh, because of the young kids because sometimes it can be quite a challenge getting them getting them ready. And even if I'm waking up next to Josh and he's not going to be able to help me get them ready, it's, it's still I wake up and my heart is glad. And then because I know I know really well what it's like to wake up when he's not there. 
I wake and wake up when he's not next to me because he's been away on a trip, which hasn't happened, thank goodness, for about five months. So we're lucky in that sense. Uh, but when I wake up and he's not there, when I wake up and Josh is not there, I I feel the sense of dread, like oh, I've got to do the day by myself. Next question. I hope our children slash the children in our future inherit your... This is... Mm, so many good things. Um, one of the things I hope that our ch- children inherit is Josh's 2020 vision. Because I don't have good vision. I have to wear corrective lenses. And it's a pain. And it's always hampered me in sports and stuff. So I think that our kids... I hope that they also inherit Josh's love of sports I also hope that they inherit his positive outlook on life and I really hope that they inherit his take on peer pressure because peer pressure really gets me annoyed like you know when you're kind of a teenager and everyone's like I dare you to do it you should do this because that'd be funny and then if you say oh no I'm not going to do it they're like what are you too scared and it's like Hang on, how come you're not doing it? But anyway, I've um, Josh, he's been really good with peer pressure. He'd be like, and nah, I'm not going to do it. And then if people try and tease him, I'd be like, oh, nah, I'm not going to do it. <laughs> I hope my kids inherit that. I hope our kids inherit that. Question three. You've taught me. Josh has taught me how to spend money. And I know that sounds weird, but we have different money personalities which is quite common, and I'm a bit of a saver, and he is not really a big spender, but he's more of a spender than I am, and growing up, my parents, my parents' parents grew up in Holland in the time of the, like the the tulip famine, and so they are very much into holding back and, you know, not wasting stuff, and so it's just been drilled into me, like, don't spend your money unless you really need something, and so I'd actually find it hard to buy stuff, I'd be, like, looking forward to buying stuff, and then I'd be at the point of buying it, and I'd be like, oh, I don't really need it, I can wait a bit longer, and all that sort of stuff, Josh has taught me a little bit to just spend money a little bit easier, which I'm grateful for, so that was question three, you've taught me, question four, you put me in a good mood when, that one's easy, when you make me laugh. I don't need to go into it any more than that. Question five. Your most romantic gesture was? Oh, I don't know if you can beat the uh, the proposal. Because oh, some of you, I don't know if you, I think I've told my story before in one of the episodes, but Josh proposed to me in an airplane. He was learning to, he was teaching people to fly. So it was just a little airplane. He took me on a trip flying across the back the, the harbour in Auckland across to Great Barry Island and on the way there he kind of dipped the wing and pointed at this hill and he said oh what does it say down there and he'd gone there a few weeks before and weed killed into the grass and he weed killed marry me Amy and so I looked down and I said oh that says marry me Amy how funny I wonder, that's uh, quite a coincidence that somebody else is going out with someone called Amy and I turned around and he was holding a, a box with a ring in it I thought, I mean, that's, and then he, and then he radioed back to, um, he radioed back to the base where all his friends were listening in on the radio and said, she said yes, <laughs> which was quite funny. And then when we got back to the, to the base, everybody was grinning and giving him slaps on the back and stuff. Question six. You probably don't understand how, uh, I guess the first thing that comes to mind for that is you probably don't understand how I feel the need to collect the water from the bath and put it on my garden (laughs) in summer, not in winter. We have tanks, tank water, and I just feel like when it's been a really dry day or or it's been dry for a few days, that all that water that's that's going down the drain down into the into the bush I could I could put on the plants I'm actually trying to grow because we've got a few areas of different plants and they probably don't get enough water. But it's really hard for Josh to understand. He's just like, why don't you just get the hose and, and water them, and if we run out of water, we'll buy some more water. But uh, I guess it's that whole can't waste kind of mentality. I just feel like I'm being really sustainable if I'm reusing the water for another use. It's a bit hard on the back, though. Ooh, number seven. Three words that come to mind when I think of you. 
comfort. There's some that come to mind, but they're kind of more like just currently at the moment. One of them is serious, but it's not. That's not how I know Josh. That's just at the moment. And the third one would be healthy. Hmm, I think we're up to number eight. If we could run away to anywhere in the world. Hmm, run away? We can't run away to anywhere in the world at the moment. We might be able to run away to a Pacific island. But I'd only want to be there temporarily because I'd get bored. But I would like to run away to somewhere in the Pacific islands right now. Have a holiday, I could really do with a holiday. Number nine... And last one for this section. One item of your clothing that belongs in the bin. We went to Hawaii years and years ago, like nine years ago. We did this big shopping trip, kind of. We went to the, there's a discount mall there and we found a shop that had a lot of clothes that we, that actually fit us. And so we bought a few clothes there and he bought a top there that's got holes in it now. He still keeps just rocking it because it's one of his favourite tops. <laughs> But it's got a hold of you. really needs to chuck it out. Okay, that's the end of that first section. Now, the second section is how well do I know Josh? And question one out of section two is you can't live without... At the moment, I would say Josh can't live without his digital devices and his headset for listening to movies and music and stuff while I'm working at night your favourite food is a really hard question at the moment because we changed diets at the start of the year to plant based um, there were a few issues with Josh's kind of reflux and managed to solve them through diet which is the plant based diet so favourite food is probably I mean mm, really hard I think I think it's these hamburgers that we make you hate eating it's okay number number three you hate eating well he hates eating cheese because of what it does to his throat into his body number four your favorite drink is ginger ale it depends what you mean by drink I mean his favorite drink he probably just drinks a whole lot of water um, his favourite drink, like as in have a drink because we're going out, would be Bacardi Lime and Lemonade, I think. Number five is easy. Your dream job, that would be pilot. Number six, your favourite expression. That's hard. Your favourite expression. Uh, probably Roger that. That'd certainly be the one he uses the most often. With $10, okay, so that's number seven. With $10 in your pocket you would probably buy some chocolate or some ice cream. And last one, number eight, I will leave for you to answer for yourself, for your for your partner, because I am i don't want to answer this one for Josh. <laughs> it is, you love me because. I'd rather hear his answer on that one. So that's the end of the second section. That was That was pretty hard, but, you know, I think I stumbled through made it to the end I hope that you did better than me answering those questions and maybe had a bit of fun maybe had a bit of a reminder about the things that you love about your spouse and I hope that it's encouraged you put made made lighter things and given you a bit of entertainment for the week so with that said I hope you have an awesome rest of the week and I will catch up with you next time Ka kite.